In 2016, Naughty Dog and Sony gave us Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. In 2017, we are presented with an expansion to the Uncharted series to fulfill our deepest desires to hunt treasure and explore wide open lands with the most incredible action sequences we could ever dream of while still remaining within the relative safety of our living rooms. Hi everyone, I am Lucas from Aussie Games Express and this is my review of Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Before I get into the game, I must mention that only Naughty Dog would go to the trouble of putting in a weather cycle on their main menu selection screen. If you sit here for long enough, you'll see it start to rain. The devil is definitely in the details. There are some things that I was expecting before delving into the Lost Legacy. Things like amazing graphics, smooth animations and outlandish set pieces. Most of us are also well aware that we won't be returning to the world of Uncharted as Nathan Drake. On this occasion, we gain the controls of the smart-mouthed and even smarter-dressed Chloe Fraser. So that's a no. Felt like a no. <laughs> You've got balls. I like that. We first met Chloe in Uncharted 2, where we learned that she was a gung-ho thief of an acquaintance of our man Nathan Drake, who formed a sort of kind of love triangle with Drake and his soon-to-be wife, Elena. Man, Nate. Uh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Now, don't jump to conclusions, Elena. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I sensing some history here? Oh, Elena Fisher. Last year's model. <laughs> That's cute. Oh. Coming along for the ride is Nadine Ross, a newish character that we first met in Uncharted 4, who was the leader of her father's private military company called Shoreline. Nadine is a strong character with daddy issues as she tries to regain control of her father's company after there are some issues behind the scenes. It's my father's company. He retired, I took over. Family business. Mm. Made a real mess of it. Chloe teams up with Nadine. Well, she hires Nadine to help her on her mission to locate the Tusk of Ganesh, which is an extremely valuable relic in the world of treasures. The Lost Legacy's timeline fits in somewhere after the events of Uncharted 4, but before its prologue. We learn this through dialogue and banter between Chloe and Nadine, and of which there is plenty. I suppose I should have asked about the dregs before I took the job. Not much to tell. I know Nate pretty well, Sam less so. He seemed to just appear out of thin air. It seems that there isn't ever really any empty airtime when playing, as there always seems to be some form of conversation going on. Sentimentality in this line of work? Get you killed. The Lost Legacy opens up with a very Uncharted style opening sequence, which is quite linear in design. During the opening sequence, you are introduced to some amazing visuals as you travel through the cities of India, which by anyone's measure is extremely colourful and vibrant. This is captured within the game without compromise. The gameplay here is sound and resembles the quality of the sequences from Uncharted 4 remarkably. Chloe has an uncanny ability to climb with the finesse of a woman, but with the abilities of her male counterpart, Nathan Drake. Movement is smooth and intuitive with a certain aesthetic to watching Chloe's animations from a third person perspective. In the opening sequence, the relationship between Chloe and Nadine is established to be something more of a business transaction rather than a friendship. However, the chemistry between the two characters would have you thinking otherwise. Let's get one thing straight. This is my gig. You want your share? We play by my rules. Chloe is quick-witted and punches out comedic lines in a similar fashion to our beloved Drake. All the while, Nadine comes across as a hard-faced, leather-fisted go-getter that she really wants to be. Deep down, we get the idea that she's doing this for more than just a paycheck. Whoa! Guess I should have looked for a call button before climbing up. Once the introduction is over, the linear fashion of the game comes to a screeching halt. We pack our bags and we go on an adventure to the western ghats of India in search of a treasure to beat all treasures. 
This is where the Lost Legacy becomes its own game and really moves on from its big brother, Uncharted 4. While there is a lot here that resembles the main game, the Lost Legacy really does forge its own ground to stand on. Here we have an open world, a playground for the player to choose his or her own adventure. Go anywhere, anytime, and do what you want. The sandbox that we're presented with here houses three main story missions which you can complete in any order that you so wish. Regardless of the order that you play, the story will adapt in difficulty of gameplay and puzzles, but will also provide you with all of the cutscenes relative to where you are and what part of the story you're up to. Forget the story for now if you want, and just go exploring. After all, this is in the nature of the character that you're playing as. Go and hunt treasures around the open world and try your hand at the puzzles that are scattered all over the place. In completing these side quest-esque puzzles, you'll end up finding 11 Huisala tokens, which can be used to unlock something special later in the game. There's no spoilers here, so go and see for yourself. It will be worth your time. The world that you get to play in feels alive with wildlife and enemies. To get through it all in one piece, you're going to have to use your brains to work out tricky but doable puzzles. Not sure. Don't think so. It's shut off. Okay. Sneak around using stealth to your every advantage and all going guns blazing and blow everything up. There are scenarios for every kind of playstyle here, and while on this topic, I have to say that it was nice to have the silenced pistol added to the game. Now it's possible to take down enemies from a distance without alerting every other enemy in the area. This isn't a cure-all though, as there are enemies with armor of the gods that will act out their bullet sponge fantasies. Of course, you can't have an open world game without loot boxes, and the Lost Legacy provides this most definitely. Lockpicking has been added to the game mechanics, as Chloe is the master of lockpicking with her hairpins. Luckily enough for her though, she doesn't get made into a Chloe sandwich. Or does she? Sadly, the aforementioned loot boxes don't really house anything too exciting other than weapons, grenades, and sometimes collectibles. While it is worth your time to unlock these boxes, you're not going to get any amazing surprises pop out at you. As for the lockpicking mechanic, it's new to Uncharted, but it's far from something we haven't seen before in other games. It's super easy to unlock these boxes, but I felt it was a way for the game to make it a little bit harder for you to go straight for the good weapons during a firefight. Mostly. Making a return to the gameplay is the good old rental truck to help you traverse the open lands of India. While you can make it on foot, it's going to take a long time, so the use of this rental truck is going to be a big help. Once again, there's nothing really new with the way the truck works, but you'll be using it to get around the medium to large open world, and there'll be a few times where you'll use the winch just like you did back in Uncharted 4. And there we go. Another mechanic welcome back is the grappling hook. Another staple tool from Drake's arsenal has returned and gets a lot of good use throughout the game. There are even physics-based puzzles around the place that will require the precise use of the grappling hook. With a game that looks this good, you'd be mad not to include photo mode. Luckily, photo mode is included here and there's a healthy amount of filters and frames to make use of your beauty shots. My personal favourite is the new addition where you can now choose different facial expressions on Chloe before taking your shots. Marvellous! I'll finish up by saying that Uncharted The Lost Legacy ends up playing a lot like an Uncharted game, and for very good reason. There is a consistent level of polish throughout the game which meets and exceeds the standards already set by Naughty Dog. It's a solid shooter, often with frustrating bullet sponge enemies and physics that seem to bend to the whim of the player. 
And driving around in the rental truck is satisfying, if only as a means of transport this time around. The open world setting of the main portion of the game does do the game justice and was a nice change from the usual linear paths. Other than the open world format, most of the game remains the same as what we have already seen before. And it would have been nice to see a new mechanic thrown into the mix here or there. But what we have been given more than justifies the existence of this expansion. It's a powerful story with heartfelt moments, big action and a slew of collectibles to boot. For a standalone expansion to an already existing game, it's a pleasure to see players will net around 10 hours or so of gameplay from this title. Uncharted 4 The Lost Legacy is available from the 23rd of August 2017 and is exclusive to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro. Thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one. Incredible. It's our old friends, Harasharama and Ganesh. Friends? Looks like they're fighting. Well, when the Hindu gods aren't off fighting demons, they're sometimes fighting each other.